So now we've got our rig uh, initially set up for our joints. Um, we do need to do one last thing before we start moving on to either IKs and RLJs and controls, um, and that is to uh, set up or to regulate the local rotational joint orientation. It's a bit of a mouthful, um, and it's a little bit of a strange one to get your head around at first. Um, but I'll explain it as I'm going along. Um, it's fairly simple, it's just a little bit time consuming. Um, so with our full rig, full skeleton rig set up, we need to go up here to this three little buttons here. First one will be uh, hierarchy and combinations, uh, which we hardly ever use. Uh, the second one is our normal object type, that's how we select stuff and you know adjust it or build stuff from. The last one is component view and normally your window will be like this where you've got your magnets here just next to it there's a little bit of a tab we can click on and that should bring out this menu uh, and the two things we need to select are well the one thing I should say is this little question mark so select this component click make sure that component button is, is uh, selected and then click uh, the miscellaneous component tool. Um, yeah, just take notes and try and keep up on this one. So what this does is, if we select everything, oh, we get this. And this is going. This is showing all the local rotational points of every joint. And it's a little bit of a mess. I know we've gone through this a little bit in class. Uh, don't freak out this isn't as complex as initially visually looked like so if, let's take the spine the, the spine's a, a, good, a good one to kind of build from we set up the joints and then inside that joint because it's a 3D asset everything has an XYZ component to it where it kind of like it knows how to move and rotate and scale in relation to the world and as we've set up this we've been adjusting these behind the scenes uh, and these it this rig is is in a workable state if we didn't do this with the IKs and stuff but this is a step which which covers your back when it comes to animation or anything like uh, applying set driven keys or anything like that because it just means that when we say we want to rotate this foot around an axis then this foot will be rotated around the exact same axis and we don't have sort of we have to rotate the, this one around X and then this one around Z we're just fixing all that sort of thing um, it's also good housekeeping and one big thing about 3D modelling is nice clean good housekeeping uh, keeping everything very uh, recognisable so shall we get started um, so if we've got this selected and then we've selected our little question mark we can select the entire rig and uh, it will look like this if we we can now go in and start adjusting these and it won't actually affect the joints above it in the hierarchy we're only affecting this local joint itself and not the position of it which is cool but there's one thing we need to do beforehand is go up to our little tool menu, there's our little spanner guy here and then we need to make sure that rotation mode is set to local and then discrete rotate and relative are clicked on and then step size is set to 5 and that means that when we rotate round we'll be snapping in increments of 5 so that we can get everything perfectly lined up and we're not having kind of like edges that are skewed with so uh, let's take this top head joint as an example um, what I have said in class is I always build with the x-axis going down pointing to the next joint um, so taking that taking that on board uh, we can just set this top head joint to this so the z-axis is facing down the axis um, x-axis is facing up and the y-axis is facing left now yes this is counter to what we're normally used to with um, y being up x being sideways 
I know this is a little bit strange um, just go with me it makes rotating stuff a lot easier uh, when you're rotating when well when you're translating you you translate up in Y but when you're rotating uh, everything's kind of flipped on its side and the only thing I can really say is imagine an apple and you stick four well you stick three sticks through it one at each direction like XYZ um, what would be an X in translate now becomes your Y axis for rotate and what would be Y axis now becomes your X axis and what will be Z axis stays the Z axis to be honest um, it's very strange uh, it comes with years of knowing the software and using it uh, and just being comfortable with it so with that said we're already five minutes into the video um, we have to go around and just start adjusting everything so face the z-axis coming out I know in class I might have said uh, face the y-axis out I've done some reading and uh, just looked at logical steps of what I'm doing and I've actually started switching up the process to actually facing the z-axis out so facing that down the world which makes sense so in relation in, in, in relation to the spine in relation to the spine uh, the y-axis will be facing out to our left or the geometry's right so if we just go down the line now and rotate uh, we clicked local in our rotation there so that the actual position of the rotation is, is slightly at an angle because that's how the rotation is set up inside this so, all, so we don't have to kind of do some weird rotations all we have to do is rotate around one axis that we want to flip and it rotates naturally uh, which is good anything that helps us do our job faster the better and we just want to make sure that if we we're having everything nicely lined up That's looking pretty good for the spine. So the Z's are facing forward, down the Z axis. Lovely stuff. Uh, so if we work onto the legs now, you can see that everything, if you. The stuff is backwards on the leg. You can see that what's Y is facing down here, is facing up here. So the legs get a little bit of a. Uh, They've got a little bit of pain. The fingers will be a bit more of a pain as well, just because of the very nature of what it is. The spine is the easiest thing to set up first. So let's go down to the hips. And again, we want to make sure that we are find everything nice and neat. Uh, the X facing down towards the next joint. And then just rotating. So here you'll see that up here our Y's are facing to the left and down here our Y's are facing to the right. That's because basically we flipped the direction of our um, joints. Where these joints are going up, these joints are now going down. So literally we've just flipped everything upside down. I am quickly navigating, oops, I am quickly navigating around the scene. Uh, using F to focus quite a lot. Now when you come to the end you'll probably find that the joints are completely just facing off in their own directions. We want to still keep that flow of joints so the X will need to point towards the next joint. The feet point them just try and straighten them out uh, as best you can so they are facing in some sort of cardinal direction and then we do the same for the other side which is lovely uh, I'm using the front view quite a lot just to make sure that I'm getting stuff lined up 
as it should be. I'm taking keys from this side over to this side. Uh, obviously at this side I have to do a lot more work because I have to flip the x-axis as well then make sure that my z-axis is facing in the right direction. This ankle joint is a strange one because here we're having a major ankle change so we're all, we are making a 90 degree angle so we need to be very aware of what we're doing. Decide to try and measure this up as best as possible. It's all right. Do the same thing. Arms are looking alright actually. That's quite good. So the Y axis is facing up and the Z axis is facing out. That's good. So here, obviously, the hand now splits off into five different sections. Uh, I try to aim the x-axis down the middle of the hand, about there. Yeah. It's a funny one. Uh, and we'll quickly do the same on the other side. So this, these two will be a bit different. Uh, don't worry about it too much. As long as our x-axis is facing down our arm, that's all. That's all we're. Uh, that's all we're concerned with. And, and the z-axis is facing forward. Here I've just made a decision of actually changing around uh, the rotations of the fingers so the Y axis faces up. <coughs> like that. Uh, that will give us a much better setup for when we do our set driven keys.
So there we have our rig orientated ready for IKs and reverse lock joints and controls and everything else we're going to bring to it. Okay.